Hey guys, it is Fairy Grace. We're in a very informal setting, but you have to start somewhere. And I want to interview historical people, people that are treasures or people that do what they love in life. And today I have the honor of meeting Miss Helen. She is a historian, a reenactor. She basically anything historical, she knows about it. And I do want to say, if you're comfortable, you just had a birthday yesterday. Yes, I did. And how young did you turn? 78. 78. Yes. So happy birthday. Thank you. Um, she's done things, uh, all kinds of things, yes. but what we want to talk about today, we're going to do several segments with her, is a lady named Sophia Cox. So give me they say to really understand something and for someone else mm -hmm. to understand it, say it as if you're telling an eight-year-old or a third grader. Okay. So in bullet points, because we're going to do this 15-minute interview about Sophia Cox, a wonderful, powerful woman that I'm mm -hmm. just very impressed with and, ve and very eager to hear more about her, um, tell us who was Sophia Cox. Sophia Cox was a woman that was born in the 1800s. 1800s. And she, her family was quite wealthy. And during that time period, when you got married, you had to turn over all of your money to your husband. He could do anything with it. He could gamble it. He could spend it on prostitutes. He could burn it. And you had nothing to say about it. Wow. Well, Sophia... See, ladies, look how far we've come. Yeah, Sophia decided early on she wasn't going to get married because she wasn't turning over her money. She knew what she wanted to do with her money. And what was that? She wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. She was a true rel Christian woman, I will mm -hmm. say. She was religious, not, I mean, she was religious, but not to the degree where she went out and preached it. She wanted to not preach religion. She wanted to preach charity. She wanted mm -hmm. to give charity. And so every uh, young man in Philadelphia, where she was from, would take one look at her and say, <laughs> no, 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 because she's not going to give us anything, and she refused to marry them. And she had a lot of money, so she was, you know, want, people wanted to really come, at, they came after her. Mm -hmm. Well, then she met Eckley Cox. Now, Eckley Cox, which eventually became her husband, was very close with the family, okay. so she knew him. I understand that Eckley was engaged to another woman at the time, and he and she died from some either diphtheria or something that had come along. So, and also he went to school in in uh, France and in Germany, and he spoke French, German, English, Spanish, many languages as as she did. She wow. was very very well um, uh, learned. I don't know. She went to school in Switzerland, which I assume was a finishing school because that's okay. all it was at that time. But Sophia was smart. I mean, she was very, very smart. Mm. Well, Eckley and her got together, and she told him right off, I'm not going to give you any of my money. And he said, I don't want it. I've got my own. You can have it. They got married because she was now happy. And she made him put it in writing, by the way. Oh, wow. Yeah, she was not going to fool around with yeah. some guy. She, just, yeah. she meant it. Yeah, she, she wasn't going to let anything yeah. change that. Now, she was very, very quiet and very staid, had a very dry sense of humor. And Eckley was just... I love her. Can I just... I want to <laughs> meet her. Do you reenact her, I, Sophia Cox? I Because no, you do reenact yeah, her. Yeah, I, right? I have not... Re I've told her story, but I've not oh, reenacted her. Okay, okay. Uh, but... She was, he was very outgoing, okay. very, very jovial. So they got along very, very oh, well. Okay. Um, they got married and they moved into uh, where he was a coal baron in uh, the Hazleton uh, area, uh, the Anthracite Coal. And they, and they, he, and he and his family, his, he had four brothers, okay. and they owned 50,000 acres in five counties. Wow. And this was in Philadelphia? No, it was so. up in up in northeastern PA. Northeast, okay. The Anthracite Coal area is that area, northeastern PA. Okay. And a lot of it was giving uh, was grants from the king when they mm -hmm. when they first settled over here early on. Mm -hmm. And they bought up a lot of land. Now his forefathers or fathers before him, Tenchcox, which that name was never repeated again. Uh, Eckley was repeated many times, and Britain and all of it, but Tench only one time, uh, hmm. uh, so I don't know why, but he bought up all he could, and he told them, Tench worked with Hamilton to set up our monetary system for the federal government, hmm. 
And he had insider news. He knew there was coal. They weren't quite sure what to do with it, but they knew there was a valuable mineral underground. Mm -hmm. He bought up everything. So he really had insider information, okay. which is insider trading today, but ah, back then it was not. Okay. And, he, and he, he died poor with no money, but a lot of land. And he told his family, do not sell that land. That land will make you millions, and it has, and oh, it still wow. continues to make them money. Day, day. Yes, 2021. Right. That's right. Wow, so he knew something. He knew. He knew it was going to make them. Wow. So anyway, the Cox family, the brothers, got together, and they formed one was an engineer, one was a, a, a lawyer. Um, Eckley Cox had over 100 patents. He was quite the engineer mm. and others ran just a business and they started making putting together patch towns and these are little towns where the miners had to live okay. they had to buy from the company store which was exorbitant prices oh. yeah it was it was horrible actually and the mm. homes were just little nothing homes four rooms you know and mm -hmm. the women of these towns really they really saved the men because mm -hmm. a lot of times when the men when when it was cold and they couldn't go in they they couldn't uh, transport the coal they would be laid off well the women took in borders they made things they cooked they oh. they kept the family together which mm -hmm. is very very in our history is always the way the women worked mm -hmm. even out west the women went out there and settled the west because the men were running wild out there so they went out and they got schools and churches and wow. so the women are always way to go women making schools that's and right. churches the women the family together always the men work hard been the glue Mm. That's what I call them, the glue that kept the, the family the together. Glue. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and they kept it going, but life was extraordinarily hard. Now, mm. when Sophia came into the into the picture, she had this money and she knew what she wanted to do with it. Mm. She first of all set up the first home nursing event in this country. Wow! She would have a nurse that a head nurse, like you would call it, I guess we call it today, they would be there and the nurses would go out to the patch downs to see who needed help. Oh, wow. And she would make sure that the sick got taken care of, particularly the children and the women. Yeah, because it was rough. It I mean, was, Nicole it Monty, was. Yeah. My husband's working on a book and there are some tragedies that I he tells oh. me about them and I sit there and I cry in yeah. her kitchen and I'm like, it's, It was horrible. A lot so of it was Sophia horrible. Sophia Cox, really was even the glue yeah. there to yeah. heal these men of let their me, spirit and let body. Let me tell you how bad it was. If a man died in the mines, mm -hmm. they would throw the body on the porch. Mm -hmm. The women would have to take it in and clean it up and they would have a mourning uh, period and then they would bury it. Immediately afterwards, the bosses would come and throw the women and the children out unless the women married one of their boarders. Oh, so you would have okay. a boarder in there and if he didn't mind taking care of the children, they would get married immediately because they had to keep their house. Mm. Life was extraordinarily so hard. So you lose your husband in a tragic way, probably young, since yeah. most of them were young, well, yeah. working and dying. Yeah. And then to keep you and your family in your home, you would just quickly marry. Marry one of your boarders or somebody that was available. And if you did not, all of your furniture, everything you owned was thrown out in the street. And there was no, there were no places, there was no access cards there was nobody to help you the churches tried to help as much as they could but you have to realize that you had immigration coming into this country mm -hmm. in such a force that if one man that if you didn't he didn't like your work mm -hmm. go go they could put another person in your mm -hmm. place immediately everyone was replaceable yes, yes. and sophia started with taking care of them mm -hmm. and she built a hospital for mm -hmm. the uh it was it was a, not very far across from the church that she also built. They built a hospital so that the men could be taken there. She gave the state hospital in Hazleton $10,000, which at that time was a lot of money. It's so a lot that, of money today. <laughs> so that a wing could be Let built. Alone back then. A wing could be built wow. so that because they would not take the miners or the poor people into the hospital. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. And so she had this wing built and paid the doctors so they would take care of her people. She wow. called them her people. Wow. In the winter time, she wow. would take fruit, anything at all done, and she would get into a buckboard, and literally, she was quite the horsewoman, but she into a buckboard, 
Now, most women in her state would have had a driver and a carriage, okay. an old buckboard filled with fruit and vegetables, wow. and take it to the patch towns and distribute it. Mm. She was so much. What do you mean by a buckboard? I mean, maybe other people are educated. Okay. What do you mean by a, a buckboard? two horse buckboard? It would okay. be a buckboard with just an open with just a seat and an open back, and that would okay. be filled with, with fruits and vegetables. So she would ride it herself? She or... would, yep, take it. And her, um, she had, she did have servants in her house. The house she built was not the mansion that the others built. Mm -hmm. It was a nice, big, big Victorian mm -hmm. home, but it was not a mansion. Anybody that comes into the house, you always say, oh, it's such a man, it's not a mansion. It's mm -hmm. not like the, the other ones. You could see, if you go into Jim Thorpe, some of the big mansions that these coal, uh, miners built mm -hmm. these barons they they wanted to show that their wealth mm -hmm. her on the other hand she wanted just a house a nice mm -hmm. house yeah but and it's a big house mm -hmm. a big victorian home but it's not a mansion because mm -hmm. she had other things she wanted to do with her money more important to her then she would take care of all these people mm -hmm. then during her life she set up trust funds that to this day, I have no idea how it works because she died in 1926. Okay, 1926. And to this day... So almost 100 years yeah, ago. To this day, 200,000 a year goes out to people within a radius around the house of that they call. For example, it's not like, like the government giving you ongoing. The only thing she does ongoing is she pays dentists every year to take care of children's teeth. Today, you Today, mean? she pays enormous amount of okay, dentists. So this woman that in about five years will have been in heaven for a hundred yeah. years, this till this yeah. day, twenty twenty one, children. Yes, still go to are, dentists. Yes. Like I could cry, like what a legacy. Yes. She And also she gives out two hundred thousand dollars in charity. For example, if wow. you if you would go to Catholic social services okay. and if you earn too much or they just couldn't help you, they would send you to the charities. Mm -hmm. It's called the Sophia Cox Charities. Sophia and, Cox after her name yes. charities. Okay. And it's run by the family oh, out wow. of Philadelphia. But wow. they have a representative up in the area, okay. and they would decide if they can help you. Now, what their help is, like if you're in the middle of winter and you run out of oil, okay. they would make sure you got oil, oh. but only one time. I mean, it's not okay. an ongoing thing. So they don't want you to be habitually That's right. needing them. They want you to use this blessing and get on your feet That's and do right. what you're yes. meant to do, right. maybe become the next Sophia Cox. They will get requests, yeah. for example, like wow. they need a bed. Mm -hmm. uh, for a sick person that mm -hmm. will move, elevate, and you know, okay, uh, yeah. yeah, and they will see that they get it, mm -hmm. and so they do so much wonderful things. And I mean, I have seen the letters come into the house mm -hmm. that are just you want to cry when you read them. You you, you help me, you save. And in fact, one gentleman came up to me <clears throat> when I first moved there. I was going to say you said you see letters yeah. come to the house. Yes. What do you mean by that? Well, they uh, people from the charities they will send letters to the Sophia Cox House thanking the charities. I would forward ah, them on to Philadelphia okay. or to the representative, but I would get them, and uh, they told me to open them and see what. Wow. Yeah. And wow. so, but I had one gentleman come. I want to the, move this over so I don't cut your okay. shoulder off. There you go. Uh, I had one gentleman come into the house, and he said. I want to. I, I have to tell you that if it wasn't for Sophia Cox, I would not be here today. Mm. Saved my father, my grandfather's life, who then had children, wow. and it went on like that. And people all mm. over were. That's the way they felt about her. Um, they called the Slovak people set a memorial up at the house, mm. right out in the lawn. They called her the uh, Angel of the Anthracite. What's this anthracite? Mean? Anthracite coal is what sh the anthracite region. Okay. So we are talking about a region, but they called her the angel of the anthracite. It's so appropriate. Yes. She really was. She really it was. To this yeah. day. And she would just do amazing mm -hmm. things. After she died, she left money available so that women who, like if you got, you had surgery, and you just, you, you, it wasn't where nurses were there, but you needed a place to rest for a couple of weeks to rehab. Okay. You, re you could come to her house and stay. And she had a cook. Uh, a housekeeper and a person to drive wow. and then she had women they called her the women of uh, good character oh i they like could, that they could women come of good and character. Come, they could come i don't and know stay. if i could fit there all in that category yeah, i don't know any everybody <laughs> i asked what does that mean they said they have no idea they they do know that she would have like minors wives who never had a vacation they could come oh. and stay 10 to 2 weeks at her house oh. be waited on and i talked to the one woman that before she died about what they did and she said the most thing they wanted to do was 
get in the car and go for a ride in the country. Aww. And so they would take them all over. They would have dinner for them and they could stay there. And that went on until 1972. 1972, Yeah, wow. and then they stopped it because pretty much most of the miners' wives were, I mean, things had changed and mm -hmm. it wasn't really needed. Uh, and so the house really closed down after that. And I went along and said, okay, what are you gonna do with this beautiful house? You know, it's just standing on 13 acres and nothing is being done with it. And so they, the family, and uh, decided that it would be nice if I went in and did something with it. Mm -hmm. So I did, I went in and for five years I had, I, I made the house alive. In fact, I got responses from people when I was leaving that I brought life back to Driftman. Oh which is a little community that the house was located in. So the house is lo located in, in Drifton, Drifton, Pennsylvania. Drifton, Pennsylvania, yeah. okay. It's right outside of Freeland and Hazleton. Okay. Uh, in between, but it's a little, it was also considered a patch town area. There's little okay. towns there, Ebervale, all these little towns around in that area that were named after them. But after 9-11, Drifton became incorporated into Freeland for the post office. Okay. But the family did not want to move did not want to change the address because that was her address. Aww. And I agreed with them. I, I thought, agree with yeah. them as well. Yeah. And so <clears throat> So you took over this house. I took over the house. For five years. For five years. So was this the house she lived in? Yes. She oh lived my in. gosh. She you actually got to live yeah. in the house of Sophia Cox. Yes. She actually died in so did Eckley. Eckley died in the house at fifty four okay. because of pneumonia. Oh. He, they didn't have any penicillin Back or anything, then. so he died of pneumonia. Very young. Uh, yeah, very young. And she, everybody else, now, eventually all of the coal barons sold out their mines to other organizations, okay. and so did the Cox, so did the Coxes. But all of the families from the Coxes, remember there were four brothers, so yes. they all lived around. They all moved back to Philadelphia. Okay. Now, Eckley had died. Okay. And Sophia said no, she was staying there. She stayed there. She went to Philadelphia once a year to buy Christmas gifts for 300 children. Wow. Every year, 300 children got two gifts, a practical gift and a toy. Oh my gosh. Now let me tell you. It's like something we still do today. So her spirit yes. is just permeates right. so many things, and, so many places. And those, wow. those people told me that got the gifts. In fact, I had actually had in the house, a dollhouse mm -hmm. that she had bought Oh in the, 1905, I believe, and they they gave it back to me, and I, I put it in the house and left it, you know, there because, wow. of course, it was gorgeous and books. But she would um, keep such good records that no child received the same gift two years in a row. Now, I'm just astonished. Yes. This woman was really, really brilliant. an ancient. And not only that, brilliant beyond compare, because you have to remember, she gave $200,000 a year out. She gave money to MMI for scholarships for kids. She gave money to the the, Saint, the Episcopal Church, okay. to Lehigh University, and gosh knows what else. What she used to do was she would give you money. Mm -hmm. She didn't want anybody to know it was her. Okay. She would give you money and say, you give it to the church. Oh, and they beautiful. would they would laugh and they'd say she was the first one to launder money. Because ah! <laughs> she would never... <laughs> But she did it because she didn't want people to right. know it was from her. Which is also biblical. So yeah. she was a woman that knew her Bible and no. actually oh, yeah. did something yes. with it. Yes. She was the Bible yes. in action. Yes. And she was indeed a wow. very, very, I mean, she was a Christian woman in every sense. Mm. She just believed that because she had this money, it was a gift from God and that oh. she should... She should help people. And she it, did. And she did. And still almost and still doing, years yeah, later. And still doing it today. Oh, my gosh. An amazing woman. Nothing has ever been written about her. And let me tell yeah, you a story. Yeah, I was going to say, because okay. you were telling me about this house, Sophia right. Cox, and I'm like, wait, let's, this very, you can see, very impromptu, yeah. um, humble thing. But because, Miss Helen, your history inside of you is a treasure is a blessing and I just want to extract it. I'm yeah. so hungry to hear it. I never learned about Sophia Cox well, in school. They had they had one gentleman who researched and researched and researched and was writing a book about her. Mm -hmm. He died. Oh. His son picked it up and his son died. Okay. And Don't no, write a book no. about Sophia Cox. She did not Maybe want, she didn't want no, that. She did not want that. Wow. What she wanted she mm -hmm. believed that it wasn't anything special she was doing. Oh, she was doing what heavens. God and 
the mm -hmm. church and everything said she should do mm -hmm. or, or that she thought she should yeah. do. And so she did not believe that it was anything special. So, I mean, I don't want to believe in bad luck, but is there anything funny business about us not doing a tape on her? <laughs> I don't think so. I've talked about her repeatedly. Because you also gave me a morning hat today. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yes, I did. I But I used to do a whole thing on Victoria Morning. That's yes, why I gave you, you the morning we hat. We will yeah. be doing that as well. We're going to get a little more better lighting yeah. and stuff. Um, but, but anyway, she okay. was she was just an incredible person, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and that she just believed that that's the way you should do it, and she could not understand why others did not do it the same I, way. I can, I can, that can actually resonate with me, and I don't mean that by I by any stretch of the imagination that I'm anywhere yeah. near her caliber. But simple things that um, I will do or something and don't think twice about, people will say, well that's amazing or you know these right. accolades yeah. and and you honestly don't understand you're like you don't do that yeah. or you think that's special yeah. it's not it's yeah. just your breath yeah. and breathing but she was to this whole nother level it's like god knew she was going to do this but here i have a question how many other sophia cox do you think were meant to be women that God put in their spirit and their heart yeah. to do this. But let's face it, as you said, Sophia also had to have um, trust, faith, and boldness to stand up and against smartness. what society yes. would yes. say and then, you know, have a husband that would agree to it. But At, at know, some point, we talk about Victorian rules, and there were books on rules and regulations for the Victorians. They lived in a very, very box. Okay. And... Um, it's really interesting because during that Victorian era in England, nobody stepped out of the box. So you had less inventions, less mm. people thinking outside the box. Mm. But for her, if you stepped outside that box as a woman, you were just, you, you were shunned. You were no longer mm. part of society. She didn't care. She didn't care. And that's a true, uh, she did not care. And yeah. true, yeah. She was, true, she was an incredible. Everything. Yeah. I don't even have a word for I her. Know. She knew that. She yeah. knew if I step out of this box, I'm going to right. be shunned. Yet she had the boldness and the, and I, I want to make word, the word brave something different. But, you know, she was yeah. brave to do that. She was. But um, the other thing is there's so many women in history that have done so much. Mm -hmm. As you, If you research women, but nobody wrote about them because we weren't important in history. Okay, so that is what we're going to yeah. do. You have the history of all these women that we don't know about. Yeah. And believe me, I'm not a man basher. I have a husband I adore. I have yeah. three boys. Even the dog is a male. So that's not it. But I want to give homage. I want to give respect. So why don't we do that? Why don't once a week until we run out of topics have a, a interview yeah. okay. about these women, these historical women that have changed life for the better and you bring them back to life. Well, they just they just don't talk about them. I mean, mm -hmm. like Sophia. I would when I had my teas, I would have a in between 15 minutes where I would talk about her and the house and the whole thing. And people would sit there and they'd say, "We didn't know that. We've lived her all of our lives wow. and we did not know that." Mm -hmm. And it's because there's nothing is written about it. Uh, nobody writes anything about it uh, mm -hmm. unless the women themselves started and she did not believe that she was doing anything Special, yeah. She just believed it. That's what she, she should do. What she was yeah. meant to do, and she was. Yes, and she was, and she was, and she was. Uh, she's very well known up there, and very loved mm -hmm. in that area. Yeah. In fact, I have to tell you that in this house, I had hundreds of people coming through this house. One time, three hundred people came through on a Christmas because it was all dressed up in Christmas. Mm -hmm. But I had all kinds of things around the house laying out like somebody had lived there mm -hmm. and do you know that during the whole time i lived there in five years not one thing was ever taken from that mm -hmm. house and people would come in i mean mm -hmm. 45 50 people for a tea and they're roaming around you know the downstairs and there's stuff everywhere i mean mm -hmm. Glasses with the, uh, you know, the 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 strings on them, you know, the yeah. hook in your hair so you don't lose them. I mean, all sorts of things. Treasure, are, uh, treasure. priceless treasures, yes. relics. Even. And not one person, not one thing was ever taken. Wow, what we, do you contribute that to? Because I, I think out of respect for her, out of respect for her, most of the people that came through were women. Wow. They knew they knew a little bit about her. Mm -hmm. uh, I had, um, well, I had, I, I started to have a lot of Spanish women coming in because they were interested in what was going on there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yes. I have a tremendous hat pin collection. Is this from her era? Or oh, indeed it this is. This is Miss Renee from behind the camera. Yes. This is her lovely home yes. that 
she wants to well, show Well, I us. have many of these. Okay. Uh, as Renee will tell you, they're all across Renee my dresser. Renee is her daughter, yes. by the way, if I didn't clarify and that. And they were, they were the, the long ones. Now, these were for the large, large hats, okay? Okay. But when transportation started, okay, okay, the women had to so put something. So this is all authentic. This is yes. what it actually. Oh yeah, this is okay. an authentic. Uh, they would put it through their hats and it would stick out. But when people started riding on buses or and everything, they would knock some. They could hurt somebody. Yes. So the law finally came out that they had to put something. They used to put they used to put eraser tips or corks. Okay. On the end of little corks, Which I have some little corks. Elementary school, when I lost an earring back, that's what we would yeah. do. Put, so even back then, little earrings. And they weren't allowed, allowed, allowed on the bus. Not allowed on the bus unless they had a tip had on a it. Tip yeah. on there. And that's when the, wow. they, they started to get smaller then. Okay. They made them smaller. Okay. Yeah, because so. that is pretty. I mean, yeah, that's oh, yeah, pretty that's much pretty, a nail right there. Yes, look at that. Those are needle. deadly. Oh, yeah. They're, wow. they're huge. They are. They can be <laughs> deadly. <laughs> Yes. Well, now what, this container that it's in with these little yeah. holes is this also authentic? Yes. Or? Yes. This wow. is authentic. This so came from, what time era is this? Well, this is from the early 1800s. This early came. Early 1800s. Yeah, this okay. is. I think this is the beginning of the flow blue. You know I don't the, the know oh, okay. Blue. Flow See blue, how much we have to talk flow about. Flow blue china is very very valuable. Okay. And I have two things. One is from the 1700s. Mm. It is a cheese dish that mm. is just gorgeous, which I have here. Uh, and I and that is also has that flow blue, which means a, a meshing of blues. Okay. Uh, they call it a flow blue, but uh, there's a lot of um, uh, flow blue now is something that's very collectible, or it um, was collectible. Sure. I didn't collect it, but I know that this is the beginning of it. And I've got a bunch of these hat pins because I've got so many hat pins. I always say I'm going to get rid of some of them, but you know what? Hey, never hey, why leave. Not? I mean, look at this one. I don't want to get sidetracked, and I want to yeah. end us soon. This is someone's initials. Yes. Or was that a monogram? What do you yeah, call something that? like that. Yeah. So, but this is authentic. Yeah. Like someone really has. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes look, I just look at these and just want to go back and see a moment. Yeah. Someone wearing this and the black So is one. this from? Um, Sophia's house, or is this you just collected? I over collected the years? them over you the years. Yeah, them. I don't this know. This looks like a little marble or yeah, something. Yeah, wow. and these black ones were all for mourning. Now you have to remember, okay. people died very, very people. early, and the women would have to go into mourning, which is an entirely different subject because. It, so we'll do yeah. a mourning topic. Yes. We can do that. And anyway, so Sophia lived until she was 85. She died okay. in 1926. 1926. She died in the house, and she died a week after she had dedicated a new gym that she had built oh. for MMI. They didn't. The doctors did not want her to go up there because she was. Yeah, I think her heart was probably just getting out, leaving out. And she said, no, 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 she's going to go. And mm -hmm. she came back, and a week later, she died in the house. Mm -hmm. And everybody said, well, I lived there by myself in this great big Victorian home. Were there any ghosts there? I was wondering that, but I yes. thought we'd save that for another topic. No, there were no ghosts no there. Ghosts. Every night I'd come in from, if I was working, I'd come in late at night. I'd say, okay, Sophia, I'm home. Come and talk to me. Nobody Never. came and talked to me. And do you know why I believe that? And this is the, um, theological yeah. stuff, and I do want to end closely, but... Um, close as soon um there are familiar spirits yeah. and if so someone dies yeah. it could it's not really them my father taught yeah. me this in the biblical right. text it's not really them that's the ghost or the spirit mm -hmm. but it's a familiar spirit so it can come and look or yeah. perceive to be that person and in my belief because i was wondering that like are there yeah. ghosts in yeah. this victorian home where two deaths were and for you to say living by yourself and even commissioning yeah. her that she could yeah. come and there was none yeah. It is because we as believers believe once your spirit is not in your body here, it goes to be with the Lord. That's right. So she is nowhere yeah, in that home, nowhere. nor her husband, no. because she is in glory. She is in yeah. heaven, alive and well. So that's really and also, interesting. I have to tell you, I have been in homes where I'd walk in and I'd sort of... You can feel it. Didn't, I didn't care for the house. Mm -hmm. This house was the most friendliest house I've mm -hmm. ever lived in. I lived there for five years by myself, and wow. I have to tell you, there was not a moment in that house that, that I felt afraid. I'd walk in, and all of a sudden, I get a smile on my face because I felt wow. like I was home. Wow. She was that. I think when wow. good people live in, and she was the only one that ever really lived there, mm. so it was her house totally. And I think that when good people live in homes like that, it just the house reflects it. Yes. The house smiles. Yeah. And, and that's the way I felt that, about yeah. her. I felt like when I walk in there, everybody say, you walk in there at 1030 at night. Aren't you afraid? <laughs> nope. I don't even turn on the light half the time. <laughs> I just walk in and I say, okay, Sophia, I'm home. Nope. Okay. Not tonight, huh? <laughs>
not going to come and talk to me. She I would think glory. I like, would love to have her come and talk to me, but I think yeah. you're right. I think that mm -hmm. I believe that when the spirit leaves the body, you're, go right you're into gone. Heaven. The angels yeah. come. Yes. I, I know it from experience yeah. of people that yeah. have, even my mom. Um, someone that saw her a few hours before she died, she felt that yeah. presence, she felt that light. Yeah. And it says in Bibles that the angels come and they carry yeah. you, so they are taken. And I'm not saying there's not other elements to that right. where, like, someone could be, you know, there's so many yeah. things. But I'm just saying in this particular yeah. instance, yep, there was she no... was so connected with the Lord Almighty. Every... She, she left right. and she had nothing to look back no. on this. And everybody would ask me. In fact, I had even ghost hunters from TV oh, that wanted wow. to come into the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told them no. Good for you. I do not believe. Good I'm sorry. I, I don't believe there was anything there. And mm -hmm. I don't believe a Sophia would have she approved of that. She would have wanted that. No, she wouldn't have. No, she would have. not have approved well, of that Well, you, at all. Miss Helen, are a wise woman. Mm -hmm. And it has been an honor for okay, me to you. speak to you. And I know in my knowing nothing that you were divinely appointed and chosen to take care of her house because she knew you had the kindred spirit. You honored everything oh, that she I loved was. Her. Yes. And you're honoring her today. Yeah, she was an amazing woman. I, yeah. When I think of her, I always get a smile on my yeah. face. Yeah, <laughs> when you were talking about her, I'm like, let's just throw this camera on and talk about yeah. Sophia. I mean, and, and I'm sorry, but can I say, women, if you're pregnant, which we know a lot of COVID yeah. babies are coming, would Sophia not be an amazing name to yeah. name your daughter? Like yeah. when you said that, I'm like that. And I told your daughter, Renee, when she told me, I'm like, what, what's this word you're saying? She's like, Sophia, yeah, it's she, a name. Yeah. It's a beautiful name. Yeah. In closing, where does that originate from? Uh, probably from England. That's England. where that's okay. where their, her people were from, was from okay. England. Yeah. And um, they made their money on importing... Um, good wines into the country <laughs> oh, yeah okay. yeah they they were uh, wealthy and um, and in that time period wealth married wealth they oh yes, you, yeah always yes. wealth married I think wealth. to some extent yeah. today too yeah, it's, it's I believe pretty so, much yeah. a cultural thing that yeah. parents would want yeah their children. and so all of them married uh, women uh, like her sister who also had money mm -hmm. from the father married one of the Cox brothers so that's oh, how they that's okay. how they all knew each other they were all oh, very okay. connected Aww. yeah yeah and uh she spoke four languages she was um i barely speak american english but she did amazing things with her money which always amazed me because to this day do you realize that she had to put millions away to get two hundred thousand every the year. church gets god I, i'm not even sure how much the church gets quarterly mm -hmm. but it keeps it going wow. and the, the MMI gets scholarship money, and Lehigh University gets money, and heaven only... Oh, there's a picture of her, yes. Oh, yeah, let's close that, with that. That's we a would picture definitely of her right before her. she died. Oh, right yeah. before she died. So let's see if we can put this yeah. out. Her little doggie. Yeah, she loved dogs. She always had two dogs in the dogs house. I love dogs, too. There's three dogs in this house. Well, Surprise, but, they're not in here right now. That's Miss Sophia Cox. Yes, and let me tell you, died. when Thank I moved in there, Renee. they You're told welcome. me that I could not have any animals. <laughs> I think Sophia would have said no to that, that you should have yeah, a dog if but you wanted one. I had a lot of people coming and going and a lot of very, yes. very valuable furniture. So that, it would yeah, be good yeah, not was to not. risk I agree, that. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I, I agree too. Yes. She may not. I think she would be like this. It's a lived-in house. Yes. Make it your home. Yeah, probably. But yeah, you, yeah, I can definitely yeah. see why you would Yeah, the furniture was gorgeous. The house was, was very, very nice. It was mm -hmm. uh, well-appointed. Not like a mansion, like you would see, but very well appointed. And she, um, uh, the library, which I had started out with putting the T's in the library only, had these marvelous book things all built in. I mean, it was a true library. And underneath it had these very thin drawers that pulled out because he was an engineer and he kept oh. his things in there. It was a, just an amazing history. I'd love yeah. to visit that house. Can people, if they wanted to, go visit the house? I don't now? know now. Uh, now Because you I'm, just left it, right? Yeah, I left. But I'm sure that they, they probably do tours of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But uh, but the other thing that's interesting is that in the, in the, in the uh, library and in the music room were these windows that opened and that is because during that time period you got taxed on every door so you had walk through windows oh my yes as rich as they were they were still saving money yes. that's, what people say. that's how they stay rich yeah. they 
So back then in the 1800s, you were taxed on, on how doors many doors you had in your so house. So you had walk-in yeah. windows. And if you see, you'll see a lot of that, particularly down okay. south where they have the windows, you can just go out into your patio or whatever. Wow. And that is because they taxed everybody on their doors. Wow. It's amazing, isn't it? And mm -hmm. even these people that were so rich, and there were a lot of doors in the house. I mean, I'm sure bedroom it's doors, ba yeah, yeah. yeah. And she always kept like when bathrooms came in, bathroom was put in. Okay. One in the servants' quarters, one on the second floor, mm -hmm. two on the second floor, and one down on the first floor. Mm -hmm. And it's just amazing. I mean, uh, she just electricity came in. They went from coal, kerosene, gas. To electric. Wow, yeah. all in her lifetime. Yeah, all in her lifetime, yeah. And then she just, as soon as it came about, she had Oh, it. yeah, she was very modern. She, she had the first modern. car in the area. Oh, and she told her, goodness. the gentleman who used to drive her carriage, because she did have a carriage, too. Uh, <laughs> he said, she said, she, her, her driveway went all around the house. It was mm -hmm. a big house, and it was a big a lot. And so she tell them, well, take the car and drive it around. Learn how to drive, because they didn't Aww. have to have licenses then. Oh, okay. And he said, he wrote down... He was scared to death of this thing. Oh, he liked his horses. He didn't like this car. Yeah, but I can understand. He that. learned to drive it. <laughs> and he would drive her yeah. around then. Yeah, since she wow. would drive around to the patch oh. towns. But she would visit everybody in the towns and go into their homes and bring them whatever they, they need and ask them what they needed. And she mm -hmm. would help them, particularly the women and the children. The men she helped to agree, but her main her passion, passion her was the family. Mm. Her thing was the family. She wanted to help the together. family. And she also made it a rule at the time when she was alive that any child in the patch town could go to MMI, which was a mining mineral institute, okay, okay for mining. But Eckley wanted to, to build this, this, this school so that he didn't have to call people from across the pond to come okay. and be engineers. So he wanted to teach his them. own people to be engineers. Mm. Um, and so anybody was allowed to go. Well, the men could go to the school too, but you have to remember, if you're working 12 hours right. a day, yeah. you're too what tired. Yeah. yeah. But he, but all of the children, uh, now they started in the mines. I mean, at, yeah. they started in, as a breaker boy Okay. at nine or 10 years old, eight or nine years old. Mm -hmm. So they didn't really go to school at all. But he wanted them, he wanted to, have them go after the work or before work or whatever. Mm -hmm. The only way they learned to read or write was if the women would teach them if okay. they knew. And the women were very, very, they would find somebody that knew how to read and write okay. and to teach their children because they wanted their children to be better to off write, than they were. As any parent yeah. does even yeah. today. Yeah. So. Well, Miss Helen, it's amazing. We're going to do these, like I okay. said, maybe once a week and we'll okay. talk about a woman and some history okay. and some story. So. Yes. I am Fairy Grace, and this is the amazing, talented, historical reenactor, writer of plays, and everything else you can think of, um, Miss Helen, and we are going to be meeting her once a week. I am Fairy Grace, and you are amazing.